Hey, well, welcome to the Ron Johnson Discipleship Podcast, where our weekly goal is to make Jesus Christ Lord of every aspect of our lives. No compartments. He is Lord over every square inch of planet Earth and every square inch of what we do. And that's really exciting. And I think when you come to that understanding and you begin to work at making that a part of the way you live and breathe and, and think, uh, your life really gets transformed. And one of the joys of this podcast is I get to share all my friends with you guys. And uh, I got some great friends. In fact, you know, last podcast we had Ray Self on uh, talking about uh, really valuing the prophetic and moving into prophetic, not only uh, in church, but more importantly, out in the marketplace. And uh, that's one of our foundational beliefs here, which is why I am so pleased today to have a dear friend of mine, Rodney James, who's the president of Master Plan. Church Design and Construction. Church Design and Construction. I don't want to butcher that. Uh, let's just say this. I don't get the name right, but we work very closely. Uh, and uh, in fact, the uh, the two expansion projects, one which we just completed and one which we are in the middle of, uh, uh, Rodney is uh, and his company is leading the way and helping to facilitate all that. And if you've been in our uh, our big foyer here at the church and seen all the renovating from the last project, you, you see the uh, amazing quality of your work. It's fun. And now we're on a massive expansion for a new sanctuary, children's wing, and, uh, and some office space here at Living Stones. And that will explain the beautiful, I call it beautiful, beautiful mess that's outside <laughs> right now. I love it when all that's happening. Uh, it means God's on the move and, and things are happening. But welcome, my dear friend. Thank you. And, honor to be here. And uh, Rodney was just at a ministry that we have here at the church called Market Share, which is really designed to support and envision the 99% of you who, who don't do what I do for a living. You're out there in the marketplace. You're working hard every, every week. Uh, and really trying to bridge the gap and help you understand that what you do and what I do are the same thing, only a different assignment, different venue, same king, same kingdom. And uh, Rodney, you're, you're great having you here today, but also thank you for, for speaking into our context and envisioning Absolutely. our people. It's, it's so fun to, to come into a, um, a ministry like this. You know, they're so rare, and I love what you're doing here at Living Stones with the market share. We're bringing people that are not in quote ministry right. that go to work Monday through Friday or whatever their schedule is in whatever role God has them in and trying to help them understand that what they do Monday through Friday is no different when you do Sunday morning standing behind the, the pulpit. Exactly. You know, you, you made the comment they're not quote in ministry and that's because the guys like me yeah, have, yeah. have created that language. That's right. It's not your language. That's our language. We've basically said if you're if you're called of the Lord, you're going to be a pastor, missionary, etc. And then there's the rest of you folks. Right. And what I love about you is you spent two decades in the local church. That's right. So you're very familiar with with what I do every day and what what uh, what fivefold ministry uh, full, full you use the phrase full time pastors yeah. uh, or full time ministers do. But now you're a leading a company. You're building churches. Uh, you're really coming alongside the church as you have with us. What a blessing you've been! A, you've been a, a true partner in ministry. Um, but but that that false understanding, I guess, that somehow if if you're a builder or you're a plumber or you're an electrician or you're an accountant or whatever it is, you're a doctor, lawyer. Uh, that somehow that's not really ministry. Talk right. about that a little bit, because you were really driving that home in your message more. Well, you know, the, the reality is uh, all of us, when we come to faith in Christ, we become a new person. Yeah. And, um, and that new person, you know, we talked about today being a child of God, being a, a citizen of heaven, being a servant in the kingdom. Yeah. I am that no matter what I do. Right. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and, and in all honesty, uh, all into eternity. I'm going to be a son of God. I'm going to be a servant of the king. And we and the church has, and, I, and when I say the church, I pastor for 20 years, so I, I'm pointing right back at me. We've set this mindset that, you know, we pray for people to be called into ministry. Well, as you said, as Andrew articulated, and as we've talked about, everybody's called into ministry. Yep. Everybody's serving the king. Right. And so it doesn't matter what my role is. If I'm a greeter at Walmart, I think, you know, we, we ask this question to people all the time. So who do you work for? Mm -hmm. and, and what's our answer? Yeah. Uh, whatever. Who's right. The, who's driver for That's right. Our paycheck. That's exactly right. You know, I work for Walmart. I work for the church. I yeah. work for. Right. And the reality is we all work for the king. Yeah. Yeah. And we've lost that. We need a, we need that change in perception to say, I am a servant of the king 
24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now my role is what the king has me doing today, but even in that role, yeah. right? If I'm gonna go stand behind the cash register as a cashier, my thought ought to be, God, what do you have for me today? Yeah. Who's coming through this line that I need to speak a word of encouragement to? Yeah. Who, we, we never know what the king's assignments may not, be. Not just the assignment, but how we do the assignment. Like Absolutely. The, the heart motives, that the joy that we have, the uh, our desire to truly serve other people and care for other people's needs. I mean, that all that comes out of our uh, out of our It does. Role. Yeah. And it's so important. And it sets us apart from the person next to us who's not born again, doesn't work for the same boss we have, might right. be at the same place of work, but doesn't have the same boss. And uh, it just makes us, it makes us different. It does. And it ought to make us different to the point that people see that. Right. And that's what I think, you know, no matter what task we're given to do, right? Uh, do all things without grumbling and complaining. But more than that, do your work heartily as unto the Lord. Yeah. So if it's something that I don't like doing, tell the Lord, I don't really like doing this, but Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve you with gladness. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to tackle this task and I'm going to do it with joy. And, and as I said there, what happens when you start doing that is pretty soon the Lord starts moving you out of that role into a different role. Right. So you start, you, you're not folk, your identity is not in, uh, in, in your assignment at work. Uh, your identity is in who you are. That's right. And how you do that causes promotion. I think of Joseph over and over again in the Bible, oh, yeah. right? finding himself in horrific situations, not because of his lack of character, but because of, yeah. of God's processing in his life. And he always was God-centered, and he always did what he did for the glory of God. And God always promoted him. And that's right. I think that's what's an important message you know, for, for people that may be watching it today is, is not focusing on whether you're an entry level worker or whatever. Maybe you're just starting off and you're young and you're like, man, I'd like to have that office over there, not right. do this. But if you're faithful in the little things, God is the one who's seeing you and promoting you along the way. That's right. And, um, you know, I just to backtrack a little bit. Here we are. It's, it's single digits today in beautiful uh, Crown Point, Indiana. And uh, it was very dark when, uh, when we got up this morning uh, and made our way down to the church. And yet we had a, a great crowd today. An uh, amazing crowd. Uh, the place was full. And what it says to me as a pastor is, first of all, uh, folks in the marketplace are looking for somebody to speak their language. That's right. Like, who knows about what I do? Like, I, I come here on Sunday, and, and as Pastor Andrew pointed out, you know, maybe 3% of our entire uh, work week uh, is spent, say, in church. But the vast majority of what we do is spent at work, is spent at home, is spent uh, being with friends, going out to eat, entertainment, right. whatever. But a tiny little sliver happens right here. And yet most of us, you know, as, as speaking of as pastors, we'll teach and preach, et cetera. Uh, and, and we're not really thinking, how do I equip that person? How do I equip you right. to do your ministry and to see it as a ministry? How do I come alongside of you instead of just saying, hey, write your tithe check? Because that's, what, that's yeah. what business people are supposed to do, right, is write tithe checks. No, you're, we're not looking for your money. We're looking to equip you, to serve you so that you flourish in what God's called you to do. Right. And that's a different mentality. It is a, it is a different mentality. And, you know, um, in this context of the church and the purpose of the church, you know, is to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. Yeah. Well, I think for a long time the church has had the idea that we're equipping saints to teach a Sunday school class. We're equipping saints to go on a mission trip. Right. The reality is we need to start equipping saints where they live their lives, which is in the workplace. Yeah. Or, you know, you've been in the church... I'm going to equip you because I need a greeter. Yes. I need someone to work in children's ministry. That's right. we're, we're looking to take people to fill slots, and it's basically to fit the needs of the church. Right. Whereas it's kind of revolutionary to turn that all upside down and say, I, as your pastor, exist to love you, serve you, equip you to do what you've been called to do. That's not, right. Not, you know, corral you to do what I'm called that's to right. do. Or you, even though that's all good, I mean, we all need to find a place to serve. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and, and love people at church. But it's so much bigger than that. And I think when businessmen hear a church or a ministry that gets that, they're like, wow, I'm finally at home. Right. You know, I found a place that, that, uh, that gets it. Right. And I think it's, you know, we talked about it doesn't matter what position you're in. So for the worker, it's great, right? The person that goes in every day, entry level, and then God's going to honor and move you to a place. But man, Ron, for business owners who have the opportunity yeah. to change the mindset of their teams, to change the mindset of their company, to change the culture, yeah. to say, listen, uh, you don't work for me anymore. 
You work, you work for the Lord. Yeah. As, a, as a believer, this is not my company. This is the Lord's company. Yeah. As, a, as, a, as a manager of people, uh, I want to motivate you today to do what God has equipped and called you to do. And so, you know, that's where the power and the synergy really comes from. As business owners, we have the opportunity. You know, our, our slogan is building people, building buildings, and building the kingdom. Wow. And so it's building people first. And can I just pause here? Your slogan, what we're trying to communicate is that the principles of the kingdom are really seamless. That's right. Whether it's in the local church or in the marketplace, they're the same principles. So, so I'm looking. Okay, I, in your language, I would be the president of Living Stones or the CEO of Living Stones, senior pastor. You're the president, CEO of your company. You have a team that you work with every day. I have a team that I work with every day. You're set on assignment That's all right. over the country, in a sense, as a kingdom missionary, because <laughs> you're coming alongside other churches, other people, other leaders, and you're ministering to their needs. I mean, in a sense, what you're doing and what I'm doing are almost identical. It, it's, it's just a different location, different assignment. That's right. Different um, but it's the same. You know, you're there to minister to people. How do you minister to people? You got to know the word. Yep. You got to listen to the Holy Spirit. That's right. You got to honor the king. You got to seek first the kingdom. I mean, it's the same exact script, different assignment, different location. But yeah. that to me is exciting because that it means is. we're really more alike than we're different. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't think most. You know, most pastors are not comfortable with business leaders, and I don't think most business leaders yeah. are comfortable around pastors. But when you really understand, we're on the same 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 boss, same mission. That's right. And you know, the the, the cool thing about that is, as we, as I go throughout my day, as I work with my team, as I go meet with other pastors and churches, yes, we have business to accomplish, mm -hmm. but there is a higher agenda. Yeah. And like you said, being tuned into the Holy Spirit to say, Lord. What do you want out of this meeting? You know, uh, I, I shared the example that I just recently went and met with a pastor about a building and uh, walked into to his office and we sat down and began a conversation. And two and a half hours later, we'd never said anything about the building. Yeah. But we had talked about some hurts. And we talked about some heartaches and some challenges in ministry. And so I could sit there and go, man, I want to get to the building. I want to get to the building. I get the... That was not even on my heart. Yeah. My heart was, I want to love this guy because Holy Spirit was doing some ministry. And we cried. We prayed. Yeah. And, and we walked out and went and had lunch, and then we came back and we talked about the building. Right. You see, m most of the time, used to, I'd get anxious right. about that, right? Yeah. I've taken, taken a couple of days out of my work week here, and what's going to be, what's going to come out of this? Right. And what's the bottom line? Is this, right. is this a good business, uh, you know, practice here? Is it right. producing the fruit that I need? Um, but I love what you said. You started off with Matthew six thirty three, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added. And mean, that's what happens. You know, if, if I take time to do that and I'm faithful in the little things, you're entrusted with much. Yeah. So guess what? I get home and I get an email. Hey, send us a contract. So, you know, I don't worry. The, yeah. the freeing thing is for business owners, for you when you go to work, is if I'm on the king's agenda and I accomplish the things that the king has for me today, everything else seems to get done. Yeah. Right? doesn't mean I don't work, but it, that work sometimes becomes easier. Sometimes there's favor when you go to do something yeah. that you didn't expect or anticipate. And what you thought was going to take X number of minutes or hours takes less than that because there's favor. The hand of God is upon you. Why? Because I sought first the kingdom and everything else came together. Yeah. I've, I've encouraged business leaders like yourself with this principle. You know, when you seek first the kingdom, in other words, you're saying, Lord, I'm working for you. Your agenda is before my agenda. I'm, I'm going to focus on eternal realities, heavenly realities. I'm going to focus on people. Uh, then what happens is what you say, Lord, I'm working for you. But then he says, oh, you are? Well, I'm going to work for you. That's right. And he actually causes the favor uh, to fall upon you. And you find that the phone call, the guy that you've been trying to reach on the phone, you know, for the last two weeks and you can't reach him, all of a sudden he called you. That's right. Uh, and the, the, the account you've been waiting to, to close on, uh, while you were ministering to this guy, they called the office ready to close the deal, you know, yes. and and it's just like God begins to you know, pour one thing on another, or this guy you're loving on a ministry to knows he's in a church network of 50 other churches, and they all have the same need, and now right. because you cared for his soul, you just swung the door open a favor to a whole market, for lack of a better word, uh, a, a market that you didn't even know existed, and that's just the way the Lord works. It it's, is. it's supernatural. It's powerful. It's, and frankly, it's exciting. It is so exciting. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's so fun to, to come into our, our team meeting each week 
and talk about what God did, mm-hmm. right? And um, and we just we experience that so often. Not just me, but our team. Uh, we we experience that on all kinds of levels. Right. And uh, and it's so fun to say, you know, that verse that says the Lord says, "Seek me." When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. Yeah. You know, I grew up with this mentality. I got to go look for God. He's hiding around a corner somewhere and I got to go see him. And the reality is, no, what I have to do is get my kingdom eyes on because yeah. God's at work around us all the time. Yeah. And when I seek him, I'll find him because all you got to do is, oh, there he is. And there he is. And there he is. Right. He's at work all around us. And we see him give us eyes to see that. That's get in that kingdom plane. Yeah. Right. And, and watch God work. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times our Tuesday morning team meetings begin with praise because look what God has done. Yeah. And what you I know? love, this isn't a church meeting. No. This is a, this is a business meeting. This is a, you know, a corporate gathering of, you know, of your team to talk about how you're going to accomplish your objective. But you're starting off really giving thanks to the CEO. That's it. Now, Absolutely. Now, I want you to flesh this out a little bit because, you know, I think sometimes when people hear... You know, this Christian business, men's or women's gathering, you know, uh, what does that really mean? You kind of ask, praying little prayers, asking God to bless your business or whatever. But you're talking about making Jesus CEO and and that's just, that seemed corny to me, man. I want to know about the bottom line and, you know, what does that mean? And, you know, flesh it out. You 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 know, we get together and you, you always tell me cool stories uh, that I think help help us to see that. But uh, share, like practically speaking, how you begin your day. Like we are, we just heard how you might start a business meeting. Everybody's thanking the Lord for an answer here, answer there. You prayed about it last week. You know, what does that look like? Really bringing Jesus into the center of running a business that dis- that's centered around designing and building great churches. Yep, it's it it, it begins with a perspective shift from the from the norm yeah. as a reality. First of all, you know. Um, this is not my company. It's the Lord's company. So you, I mean, we hear people say that, yeah. like your name's on the paper, you're signing the checks, you know, come on, is that for real? But, but you're, what you're saying is you have to literally come to a place where you, in your mind, shift and you, you acknowledge he really is the boss. He That's gave right. you this, he's in charge, he's the leader, he calls the shots. And here's the cool thing. If he's the owner of the company and the employees work for the owner, I have very little responsibility. Yeah, even though you're the president. That's right. That's why I took the role of president. So, so the reality is, my job is to get up in the morning and check in with the CEO. So, my times in the morning with the Lord, my journaling, my spending time in the Word, my time in prayer, my time sitting and being quiet is to say, "Okay, King, we're going to go to work today. Yeah. What's your agenda?" Yeah, and I love it. So, so your first meeting is with the. Uh, chairman of the board yeah, that's exactly <laughs> with, right. with the owner that's right with the one who funded the company in the first place that's exactly right and, and i love i love that because uh sometimes we don't a, 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 you know i guess approach our quiet time you know it's almost like all right i'm gonna read my bible and pray and hit, get out the door but really you're saying lord here i am i exist for you we exist for you that's right what's on your heart and what do you want to do and that's that is a serious like just like you wouldn't miss that meeting that's at, right yeah with the board of directors you're not going to miss this meeting with the king that's it and and you know what's fun is is then you come out of that meeting and uh, you may have an assignment. You may have an assignment for the team. You may have a word for the team. And when we come to meet together as a team, then we share that, we talk about that, and then they get to see God work in that. Right. And so the mentality is not, hey, Rodney knows that the Lord's the owner of the company. Our team understands. God owns this. Yeah. You know, I, I say your, it to That's him. your language, that's your it practice, is. That's, that's part of your life. I say it all the time. You know, don't, your benefits, your paycheck, your bonuses, don't thank me. They don't come from me. Yeah. They come from the Lord. Yeah. So it's freeing in the fact that when I go visit with a pastor and they're going to do a project, if I don't get that project, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not here. I don't have to have this project in order. That's not my word. It's really the striving, control, fear, Absolutely. scarcity mentality. Absolutely. Which yeah. is so prevalent in the marketplace. Yes. It frees me up to say, Lord, there's somebody else that you got for that project. You're protecting me from something right. in that project. Right. Whatever the case is, I can walk away and go, man, God's got somebody else that's going to do that, but I don't have to worry about that. And if if we need a job, I don't have to, man, I got to go find somebody I got to sell a job to. I, Lord, you know what the needs are. And how many times, you know, that person at the point when they're feeling like, 
they're God. They're, they're the one that has to make it all happen. I mean, we're dealing with all kinds of stress, burnout, infidelity, marital strife. Uh, I mean, physical problems that are that are because of the stress. I mean, right. like you said, this is the greatest news on planet Earth. That's right. Because the marketplace is that is that Jesus is King of what you do in the marketplace. That's exactly right. It uh, is so freeing. Yeah, it's liberating. And I love what you said too. You know, sometimes it's not. Uh, I, I guess I, I had this revelation years ago as far as living stones. That I'm not here to build a ministry. A lot of right. a lot of pastors are are committed to. Man, I want to build the biggest ministry. Now we always say for the Lord. Yeah. But really, the when it comes right down to it, there's a whole lot of us in there. Right. And um, and and I I realized it was kind of an aha moment. It was a massive perspective shift that if I will just love and build people. We'll get a ministry. That's right. That, that'll happen. That's exactly. And right. I, but that's the same thing that you're saying. It's like, okay, we're not here to sell widgets. We're really here to love people. And the company exists. We hire people. We care for our employees. We care for our customers. I mean, I've I've just watched the way you guys have treated us. You know, in our business dealings, love, integrity, respect, win-win. Uh, how do we serve you? How do we give you good counsel to do what's best for living stones? I mean, it's it's totally been um, how do we how do we bless you and how do we, how can we come alongside of you? You do that with your vendors, but you also do that with your employees. That's and, right. And you shared a story that that I think really highlights the difference between like the cutthroat bottom line marketplace uh, downsize. We need we don't need your services anymore. To where you love people right where they're at, even in their low times. That's talk, right. Talk about that situation. Yeah, we had we had a couple of employees um, this year, last year, go through COVID and go through some of those challenges. And you know, the cool thing was is God had provided in a way that we could meet their needs during that time. Uh, we had another one of our our guys who um, had a seizure driving to work and uh, rear-ended a cement truck doing sixty miles an hour. Oh my word. And you know what it gives you the opportunity to do is to pour into their lives and to love on them during the recovery. But more importantly, I just remember the phone call to, to this individual. And um, you know, I said to him, I said, Mark, I said, man, um, God must have a great purpose for your life. Because when you look at the truck, he should have never survived, much less walked away. Yeah. And, um, and, and so I told him, I said, you know, God needs you here to help us finish this project. Um, God needs, the church needs you here to finish this project and you need to be here because God's got something special for your life. And it's funny, him and another guy that works for us, you know, when they came to work for us, it's like uh, they're working not far from their homes uh, in the projects that they're doing. And, you know, initially it was like, no, I'm not traveling. I want to, I'll stay within about an hour of my house or whatever. Yeah. Uh, both of these guys now, uh, one lives about two hours, three hours from the project. One lives about 45 minutes. They're saying, you know, if you get something in the, you know, in, in, in this state or in that state or that state or that state, I, I think I can make that work. I can travel. It's because they found the freedom. Right. And uh, in in how we love them, yeah. how we treat them and how we expect what we expect of them. We expect excellence, you know, right. no question about right. the work side. But the reality is when there are moments, there are kingdom moments. There's grace for that because we know the benefit that comes on the backside. Yeah. I love the balance here because I think it's a good a good teaching point. It's funny because sometimes in the church. You know, we have staff and we have expectations and, and sometimes you have to let people go. Like yes. you say, you, 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 just because you're a Christian doesn't mean a person doesn't have a job to That's do. That's right. It means you're going to love them. You're going to pour into them. You're going to treat them with, with, with great compassion and care. But at the end of the day, you've hired them to do something. That's and right. the, the other side of being a Christian in the marketplace is we our boss is the Lord. We we work heartily as unto the Lord. That's exactly right. Which means our excellence level, our teachability, our humility, our desire to be good at what we do should be superior. Exactly. So I like what you're saying. You're, you're, you're coming alongside, you're loving people, but you're also saying, hey, we have a job to do here. That's and right. We want to do it well and we want to do it with excellence. And so there's that two, two-edged sword, I think, that sometimes I've, you know, I've heard people, well, you guys are Christians. Why did you let that person go? Um, well, because there is a job to do. That's and right. there is a culture. And there is a way we, we are called to do business. There's a kingdom culture. Uh, and it's important that we embrace that and understand that that's the other side of the coin. I think about, I think about the parable of the talents. Yeah. Right? 
the one who the two who profited, yep. the Lord rewarded. The one but the buried. one who didn't do his work, yeah. he didn't even gain interest. What did the Lord do? He cast him out. Yeah, and he, he also, took it away. He took it away, and who did he give it to? Yeah, the one who did the, the most. The one who had the most. You know, I always tell people, Jesus is not a socialist, all right? That's, That's right. <laughs> this is not, you yeah. know, everybody gets the same amount, and it doesn't matter what you do with it. It's like, no, to whom, to whom uh, much has been given, much is required. But if yep. you're faithful and little, you get promoted. That's right. And if you're not faithful with little, guess what? You get yours taken away, and the guy that's most faithful, who might have the most, he gets more. That's right. Uh, and that's the nature of the kingdom. And it, to me, it's liberating. But talk about, uh, the, you know, you, you had a, a um, meeting where you fly in everybody that's on your team. You celebrate them. You had a speaker. And then you, got, at the end this year, you were able to, to write some bonus checks. Yeah. And you had a person come up to you after that. I want you to tell that story that was just grateful for uh, for the year and the, for the love. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we had a... Uh, we, we bring everybody in. We love on them. It's just an amazing time with our team. Um, and, uh, you know, we get to give them the bonus checks for the year and all that kind of good stuff. And I remind them, don't come thank me. Thank everybody else. And so the individual um, who'd been through one of these health challenges, you know, and we'd continue to pay them. We'd continue to support them in some other ways through this season. Um, this is the first time I'd ever met his wife. And... Uh, because we hired him and he works in another yeah. he lives in a town different from where he works so when we go see him on the job site or, you know right. obviously She's his not wife's not there the so this is our first opportunity you know and we're we get through the evening and uh, i had spoken to him you know when they came in and we'd had a great cordial greeting but at the end you know she comes up to me and just tears in her eyes and she says can i give you a hug you know wow and um you realize in that moment mm -hmm. the impact that you're making on people's yeah. lives yeah that you don't even know sometimes yeah. um, just by just by being obedient to the king yeah. doing what you know the king would want you to do the boss would want you to do with his resources not my resources you know I don't worry about it takes away from my bottom line because it's not my bottom line yeah. and um, you know that's that is so it's those moments and we, we gathered around the table you know after that meeting and we we our leadership team and we said this is why we do what we do. Yeah. And that's that's what makes it all worthwhile when you realize, wow, there's somebody who's gone through a rough time. Or you, you've not only been ministering to that employee, but to their entire family. Right. By, by providing a stable paycheck throughout a difficult time. When some companies would have been like, sorry, we got to let you go. Uh, whatever, um, and uh, but you, but that's I think the difference Christ makes. We 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 stick it out. We care about the individual, and you know there's. I was just thinking there's so many uh, in our culture today are disillusioned with capitalism, and uh, they're wanting to go to socialism. Socialism seems more compassionate, um, but I think the teachable point is you know we believe capitalism comes from a biblical worldview that it's more in line with our Christian principles, and, and, and we've seen the fruit of it. Right. But when you take Jesus out of capitalism, you get a bunch of greed and power-hungry people and people that are all they care about is the bottom line, and, and, and it really takes the, the, the heart and soul yes. out of capitalism. Yeah, and I, you know the, the flip side of that is when you try to put Jesus in it for the sake of capitalism, Right, right. For the sake of greed, for the sake of well, yeah, whitewash. Uh, right, the fence with Jesus yeah. language. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's even home. more dangerous yeah. Yeah. because you know that you know that 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 damages the kingdom. Yeah, and uh, and it damages the king. Right, his but name. When, but when you realize, you know, that the greater purpose to what you do is people. You know, at the end of the day, it's not he who dies with the most toys wins. That's you know? right. Um, there's no silos were taken to heaven with us full, full of money. Why do we have money? It, it, it's to meet our basic needs, right? And then it's to be a blessing to those who are less fortunate to provide work to 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 use your skills for the glory of God. You know, I'm sure when you drive by a completed project, there's a sense of satisfaction because you know you, you were with that project from conception to to delivery. Absolutely. And you know, you're looking at this building that's now full of people, Absolutely. and you go, "Praise the Lord! I I feel great that we help facilitate." you know what's going on here it doesn't matter what the structure is it's just you know i, I used to landscape and so you know you come into just a, a brand new house and nothing but dirt yeah and by the time we'd leave 
man, we had all the landscape shrubbery in, we had the patio put in, we had the the, the sod laid. And, you know, you come there in the morning, it's a desert. You leave at night, yep. it's an oasis. oasis. Yeah. And you're just going, wow, this is incredible. Uh, and I think that that's the beauty when work is done as worship. That's it. And um, and I know that's how you see what you do. I don't feel like I go to work. I can't. I, 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 there's no separation in my life between work, non-work. It's just what I do is is the calling on my life, right. and I know that's that's you as well. Yeah. And, and that's liberating. It is. You know, I made that transition from pastoring for 20 years now to helping pastors design and build churches all over the country. I don't think the anointing for what I do today is any less than the anointing of what I did when I stood in the pulpit and taught and stood at the graveside of a family member and ministered to that family. I don't I don't see any difference in it. Yeah. It's a different role, right? but it's the exact same responsibility. In some ways, I think the impact is far greater because they look at somebody like me doing a funeral or, you know, I'll get somebody praying for somebody and they're like, oh, well, he's a pastor. When you sneak up on them and you're, you know, you're a marketplace person, you know, you don't have a clergy collar on, you know, or a robe, and you're bringing Christ into boardrooms and places where he's not normally welcome. Right. And, and, and you're surprising them because you're coming in a package that they're not used, you know, people in the world are not used to receiving that. Definitely. Uh, there's something really, really powerful about that. It yeah. brings the presence of God and the kingdom of God where he's not normally felt. It, yeah, it's experience. the fun moments are, you know, we deal with subcontractors all over the country. And, you know, can... Most of the time, construction is kind of over here, and Christianity and church is kind of over here. Right. It's a rough world sometimes, right, right, right. right? But the reality is what we love to do is we love to bring this influence to this world. Yeah. And so when you're working with a subcontractor who's normally used to getting beat up and, and beat down and people withhold their paychecks and want something for nothing, um, you know, we just approach everything differently. I love, I was walking down the hallway um, Oh, it's been about a year ago and listening to my vice president of construction on the phone with one of our subcontractors uh, at a project we're doing in California. And uh, 45 minutes of a conversation is about fishing and family. Yeah. And then, you know, we get to talk about the things in the subcontract. And I thought, you know, there again, that's that moment. There's a relationship. Yeah. It's not a contractual relationship. It's a genuine relationship. Yeah. And that relationship, though the project is done, continues. Yeah. We have subcontractors we have relationships with, not because we're going to come there and do another job, but because we built a bridge yeah. and maybe even ministered to them in a time. And that is powerful. So that's the cool thing is that it's not just me. It's the team. Mm -hmm. And we said this. We talked about this when our team was there this time. Guys, you're representing Master's Plan but you're representing the king because yeah. he owns it. Yeah. So keep that in mind when you go to work every day. Uh, that's who you work for. That's who you represent. And are we perfect? We're definitely not perfect. But the reality is there is a different mindset. There is a process that we are helping our people understand that they have value in ministry yeah. Monday through Friday, not just an hour and a half on Sunday morning when they're the greeter, when they're the Bible teacher, when they're in the children's classroom, we want them to be equipped for ministry. And I think it's just as much my job to equip them for ministry as it is your job or this church's job to equip them for ministry wherever God's put them to fulfill the role that he's given them and, uh, and impact lives. That's so good. You know, it wasn't too many generations ago when they talked about how business was done with a handshake. Yes. <laughs> and I think the reason you and I could shake hands and agree to something is because there was a relationship there. That's right. And now we live, you know, it's funny because we're all on our phones. We have all of our friends and all of our likes. Um, but even though we seem to be connected, it's not that deep connection. You know, when you're That's talking exactly about right. fishing or your family or whatever, and you spend time together, you know, we just sat down and had pot roast over my kitchen table with my Amen. family and <laughs> talked about life. And, and uh, that's one of Rodney's love languages, by the way, is pot roast. Um, but, you know, it's those type of, type of moments when you're talking about your wife or yes. your kids uh, and you're building equity and sure. trust. Right. Then doing business together is, is almost an afterthought. It, you know, it's just natural. Yes. But when the relationship's not there, then you're always looking like, can I trust you or whatever? And, right. You know, and I've shared before one of the one of the reasons for our success here and my joys as a pastor is when I work with 
with Rodney and his team, I feel like I'm working with family. I'm working with people who care about our project. They, they're, they operate in the highest amount of integrity and excellence. Uh, they, he has my back. He's going to tell me the truth. Uh, and, uh, and I can even ask him, hey, if you were me, what would you do? Uh, and there's not a lot of business relationships that you can enter into with that kind of, of open-heartedness and trust. But it's because I know he loves the Lord. I know his kingdom. Uh, I know he's great at what he does. Uh, and therefore, it, it's like a match made in heaven. Those are the kind of people you're looking to do business with. And I don't care what it is, whether it's an electrician, a plumber, a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer. When you have kingdom relationships that are relational uh, relationship base first and then business second um, it, it's a whole different game and what would what would our communities be like oh, if yeah. they were filled with Christian men and women who were operating in the marketplace as servants of the king and the in the kingdom uh, and trusting the Lord to take care of their needs while they were focused on ministering to the needs yes. of other people. I mean, I think it would transform. I think oh, revival yeah. would break out across our community. The fab the relational fabric of our community yes. would be so strong. And the blessing of God would be so profound. Uh, and it'd be really, a, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing not only to think about, but to believe that maybe God would do that. Absolutely. And so yeah. that's really, uh, to wrap things up, that's kind of why we're doing our market share ministry here. Uh, our, my desire is that it would continue to grow, that the outreach would become profound, not only in this region, but maybe the Lord would use us regionally yeah. to, to envision other people. And so, Rodney, I just want to thank you again uh, for spending some time with us today. I know our our listeners appreciate this. If you're in one of those marketplace folks, we'd love to, to hear from you. In fact, if you can like the podcast, send us a comment. I, I always love to read the feedback. And trust me, I read all the feedback. Uh, if you've enjoyed this today, um, uh, let us know about it. And, Rodney, I guess I'd throw you the ball for one, uh, one final word. Uh, uh, from you as far as an exhortation or whatever uh, for those that are listening today. Yeah. So, I, you know, the, I think the first thing is if you're around here and you're a business owner, even if you just work and, you know, have a job uh, and you want to know how, how do I live this life out? Um, come join, come see Market Share. It's, it's, uh, it's so powerful to get in a room and, and every seat was full this morning. It was exciting. There was energy there. And, and the discussion that takes place afterwards as they sit around the tables uh, strategizing with one another about how they can do this in their businesses and their workplace. But then the other side of that is to the church. You know, church, we need to equip our people where they live and they live in the marketplace. Yeah. And um, they spend 39 to 41% of their hours, waking hours every week at work. And if we can equip them yep. to better serve the king yep. in that in that moment, It'll be transformational. Amen. So, again, thank you for listening today. We hope you'll tune in every week. This podcast comes out once a week, uh, every Thursday morning. So, uh, uh, we, we, again, hope it strengthens you. If you're looking for a great place to worship uh, and you're in the area, we'd love to, to meet you here at Livingstones Church. You can find us online at lstones.org. Uh, we've got three Sunday morning services for your convenience. And I want you to know as a senior pastor, my goal is to equip you. We really, that is our vision, to equip you right where you're at uh, with kingdom principles to learn how to function and flourish uh, and move in the favor of God in your assignment in the marketplace. So uh, we look forward to meeting you. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next week, uh, have an amazing, amazing week serving the King. God bless you guys. <laughs>